Hey, Chikan, uh, this is Smartsheet. Happy to be here to present the session on Google add-ons, the good, bad, and the ugly of the add-ons. Um, I'm Alex Vorobiev from the platform team at Smartsheet. And I'm Scott McAllister, also from the platform team. Yeah, so Google add-ons, uh, we love it. We love it because it's a way to easily extend the capabilities of Google applications like Docs, Sheets, and, and Forms. Um, it, the the add-ons, you can compare them to other things that we know and love, right? So Excel plugins, Outlook extensions, stuff like that. So they work kind of kind of similarly, right? Right. Um, so the, the great thing about add-ons, um, I think, is that they're, they feel so native to Google applications that you feel like they're a part and parcel of Google Apps themselves, right? And the two things I'm really, I'm really excited about when I think about add-ons, number one, um, if there is a feature gap in uh, Google Apps themselves of some sort, and like, let's, be, let's be honest, there are a few, right? Few. Um, in docs and sheets and so on. Somebody um, can come along and they can design an add-on to address that specific need or build that particular feature and make that available to everybody else to use, right? right? So that's one thing. And the second thing is that um, ISVs like ourselves um, can create extensions and add-ons to expose our information and data um, into Google Apps. So if the customer is Google Apps centric, um, they use docs and they use sheets and they use forms all the time, we can let them hook into our information and data by building these additional add-ons. Right? So I, I bet that most people on this session are actually familiar with the basics, but just to make sure we're on the same page, why don't we cover those basics, right? Let's, let's talk about um, what the basic user experience is. Okay. And somebody looks for an add-on, somebody wants to install an add-on. I want to go through that. Sure. So if you wanted to install an add-on uh, in Google Docs, say, what we do is we find our Google Doc that we want, and then there's this add-ons menu that, if you're not familiar, can be kind of hidden in the, in, in the corner because it's just the same as all the other menus. Uh, but what's nice is you go here and you, you're opened up to this whole world of third-party apps that other, other developers have created so that they can add functionality to Google Docs. And so we have lots of these, uh, uh, lots of these uh, uh, add-ons that can provide functionality to third parties such as you know, Avery labels or Lucid charts. Um, and so for us, we developed a, an add-on called Smartsheet Merge that can bring data from Smartsheet and put it into your Google Doc. And so it provides that additional functionality. So to install it, we go through this, uh, we find it in, our, um, in that store there, and then we go through a simple install process where we uh, are shown the, the various permissions that we have to allow for that add-on to, to work. These are all the potential things that the add-on will have access to. Uh, and each one will be different depending on what, um, what functionality that add-on will have. Okay, so you consent to that, uh, right. what happens then? And so then you have a, a pop-up message that says, hey, look, there's an add-on in this menu, and you can go ahead and uh, launch it, and any Google Doc that you have will have that add-on in it, and have this functionality um, added to your Google Doc experience. So kind of really easy to find, right? So you end up uh, um, going through, essentially, to this add-on marketplace, mm -hmm. and there's a is that there is a separate marketplace for each type of Google applications, right? Right, so they, Google keeps them sep separated so that um, in forms, they'll have their own section of add-ons, in sheets, they have their own section of add-ons, and in docs, again, their, their own section because uh, the functionality obviously will be very different uh, depending on which Google, uh, Google app you're using. Got it, so you know, it's, it's a marketplace type of experience, mm -hmm. and it is, it is separate from other Google marketplaces, at least for today. Right? right. So, but you can go, you can scroll through, you can look at what's available, you can identify the add-ons that, um, that you think are gonna bring value mm -hmm. to your business, and then you make a decision on whether to deploy them or not, right? Right. And it looks like users can sort of seamlessly do it, right? Any user can go in, can go and browse the marketplaces, and pick and choose what they want, and they can install it, right? Correct. So it's super easy for users to do, right? And it's great for us, uh, quite frankly, um, for companies like Smartsheet or others that are Google partners, mm -hmm. we can then build add-ons and we can publish them to those marketplaces. We can almost instantly make them available to 
um, our Google customers and basically any Google Apps users. Mm -hmm. Right, so and it's really easy for those users to deploy. It's, it's a, essentially a friction-free uh, provisioning experience, and it's pretty instant. So we love it because it allows those customers to touch our products and our applications very easily. Right. Right. But I was also thinking the other day that um, in my past life, um, I used to be a, a, a sysadmin, uh -oh. an administrator. Mm -hmm. And it occurred to me that administrators may not necessarily share our excitement and love the proposition of users being able to go and sort of the, this wild west of going in and picking and choosing third party extensions and willy nilly installing them into the domain, right? I could, I could see systems administrators not being terribly excited about that. Yeah, so um, one thing that um, the administrator can do is, um, is understand how the process actually works. Because I suspect it's a black box for many today. Sure. Right? They don't necessarily, if they've never gone through building and publishing yet on, they don't know how much checking, verification, and uh, due diligence that Google does today to before the actual item is published, right? So naturally, you could be a little, um, be a little concerned sure. about what's in there. Um, but we've we've done it a couple of times, so I think we have a perfect opportunity to shed some light on what that process is like. Right. Yeah. So Google has uh, when you are an app developer, you create a, an app script project, and then when you go to publish it to make it available inside of the Chrome store for Docs or Forms, as we were talking about. Uh, it actually goes through uh, a review process from Google. So they have full access to the code, they review it, they make sure it's not malicious, it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't produce any spam uh, or malware, and then it also uh, covers uh, the Google UI standards that has to make it look like it's you know, running inside of Docs, so it looks similar to what Docs and uh, Sheets and right. various Drive apps. And so um, that review process, uh, at least when we went through it, it actually goes in front of a Googler, and when they have feedback, they'll send it to you, and you might go back and forth a little bit and before you get your add-on published out to, to the world so that they can see it. So it's safe to say that before any add-on goes and gets published in the marketplace, they're checked and must, they must meet certain standards, so sure. level of standards, right, in terms mm -hmm. of code quality, user experience, security, and other things that Google checks for. Right, so there is a bar that Google has that it has to pass before it can you know, be released to the, to the store. Okay, so, so this kind of information hopefully will put administrators a little more at ease. Right. right. Having a little bit more insight into the process, how it works, what step Google takes to make sure that whatever they publish in their marketplaces actually of decent quality is pretty safe. Right. Right. But in addition to that, I mean, there, there are other tools that admins can use, both users and admins for that matter, to make sure whatever they deploy looks, smells okay, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what are those, what would, you, what would you recommend that they pay attention to as they, as they look in the marketplace, as they look across the, the various add-ons that are available? Yeah, so the tools they give users that when you're searching for add-ons is uh, a lot of the same tools that you'll see in any of the other Google stores for either extensions, Drive apps, uh, Google apps, marketplace apps, and uh, of that nature. And so if you look at these various listings you have, you can look at a, a listing we have here from Lucid Chart Diagrams. You can see that there's a rating system that anybody can come in and, and leave you know, a five star or a, a rating out of five stars. You can have the number of, it shows the number of ratings. So you can see, oh, Lucid Chart says four stars and 1,100 people have said that. So you can kind of get an idea that a lot of people feel pretty much four star about um, this particular add-on. So you, you can gauge the relative credibility of the content as well. Right. But, yeah. It, it's, it's, a level, it, it's, a, it's a level that you can use, right, to, to kind of screen your, your, uh, your add-ons you want to install. Can you actually see the reviews in the store? Right, so, so down here you can actually, if people choose to uh, leave their opinion, they can write it out there and you know, we can read it as, as we come back. So that's another data point. Ex absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's all really helpful, right? These are the basic commonsensical steps that one sh can and should take before they make that decision, right? They are, um, also, they should really check out the, the developer, right. their website, uh, whether they have support, does the content on their website looks credible, mm -hmm. right? That kind of stuff. 
that I would, I would do myself and I would recommend anybody who is looking to deploy Google add-ons that they do the same. Exactly. Right. And Google provides those, uh, those tools for everyone to come and see. And if you have a concern, if you have a bad experience with an add-on, you can come and report abuse that Google gets notified and then they can take you know, action. Right. So. Yeah, so that, that definitely helps, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say you are, you're a domain administrator mm -hmm. and you may feel relatively good about the add-on, but there are still other concerns that may not be addressed by what you know, either by the listing or by the publishing process. So things like, you know, there's, there's concerns, concern around data leakage, whether intentional or unintentional. I mean, you're essentially letting a third-party application access your Google Apps or Google Docs content, mm -hmm. right? Or, for instance, um, the add-on may not necessarily be um, compatible with or aligned with some of the compliance rules or regulations that you have in your work, right? Right. So what other tools do um, domain admins have at their disposal to control so this unfettered uh, provisioning that admins, uh, sorry, that the users have? So um, domain administrators, uh, Google has, for a long time, provided the uh, ability to turn off add-ons. So you, as a as an on and off switch, it's an all or nothing thing. There's a setting inside of your Drive app settings inside of your uh, admin console that you can actually say we're not going to let users install add-ons because we're not comfortable with you know just this wild west of anyone can install anything inside of my inside of my domain. Right. Is that um, something you can super you can show? easy? Yeah, super easy for admins to to do. Uh, if we go here, the, we're in a We'll have our admin console over here, and uh, to show where, where how you get to where that screen is, we, we come to the front part of our admin console. We go to our Google Apps, and then the Google Drive, and then down in Google Drive, there's a section for data access, and that's where you decide whether um, you know you can uh, let different applications have various access to. Uh, your user's Google Drive. Uh, in this situation, we're talking about add-ons, so we'll come here and we're gonna say, yeah, we're not real comfortable with letting anyone install, so we're gonna uncheck this box that uh, is for allowing users to install uh, Google Docs add-ons from the Chrome Store. And we save our changes, and so now, any user inside of this domain will not be able to install any add-ons. Okay, so, so you have that tool at your disposal. Mm -hmm. You can lock it down completely, but also feels to me like it's a it's a pretty pretty blunt instrument, right? Right. Feels like it's all or nothing deal. You can either let anybody just run around and install add-ons to their heart's content, or you can lock lock it down completely, where nobody can install anything. Exactly. Right. So I think it limits you in terms of options, right? If, for instance, if there are some people you want to let install the add-ons versus others, or um, there are certain add-ons you want to deploy and make available to your organization, but that's not necessarily some other ones. Mm -hmm. right. So that, that's been kind of the case, this limited set of options been the case up until Real recently, recent. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what's, what's changed? What's changed is Google has provided a couple of options. One is for Google, uh, Google add-on developers. Uh, uh, Google has made it possible for them to make their add-ons available inside of the Google Apps Marketplace so that domain administrators can install it for the whole domain. And so they can make, they can pick and choose exactly which add-ons are gonna be available on the network or in the, uh, in the domain. But uh, then they can still, the cool part is, is you can do all this while still keeping uh, the installation of individual add-ons uh, locked down. Okay. So you can say, as if, you know, when you were a system administrator, you could say, well, I want this, you know, these three add-ons because they provide functionality that is common for all the users on my network, and I don't want to let them install anything else. So at that point, the individual users aren't able to install add-ons, right? But you, as an administrator, can make a decision that a particular add-on has value, you can provision it instantly across the entire domain, right? Okay. And then you, as an admin, can also vet those add-ons, right? So you can go right. through your process that you normally go through when you're verifying your know, software that's going to go on your network and you know on your machines inside of your organization you can also vet the add-ons that will be available uh, inside the, the your your users um, Google Docs and machines right. and forms. So what, what's the process? What does it look like? So doing that? 
Yeah, so for, uh, it's essentially, as a developer, you need to go through some extra steps to make uh, the add-on available as a GAM app. But okay. from an admin perspective, it's no different than installing a GAM app, which is really nice from an admin because you already know where to find apps, right. how to find them, how to you know, go through their, you know, read the ratings, the reviews, whatnot. And so you come here to your apps, marketplace apps. Uh, for our test domain, we don't have any installed right now. And we come and we find our ad, uh, we add our app. We can, you know, we say we like our add-on. We, we like our, our three add-ons that we really wanted. And uh, again, for our, our, our domain, or for our demonstration of what we're showing, uh, we're, we're gonna talk about the Smartsheet add-ons. So these basically live in the GAM marketplace side by side with other GAM apps. Right. Okay. So from a domain administrator, you actually don't see the difference between the two. Um, so it's up to the admin, or the um, add-on, excuse me, uh, developers, to make notes inside of the app description of, hey, this is an add-on, this is what it's going to do. To make it, make it super clear mm -hmm. what it does, what it is. Okay. Yeah. And so the install process is the uh, exact same as installing any other GAM app. Uh, except for now, as an, as an administrator, uh, you are the one looking at the various permissions that the add-on is uh, requesting to access, and you're saying, okay, I'm okay with this list, and I'm gonna turn it on for the entire domain, and then you know, I agree that, that's, you know, that I'm okay with that. Which gives you control. Right. right. And then, what's nice is you, Google gives you this uh, series of uh, windows after you install it to let you know you, know, you can tell your users, this is where you're gonna find this, these add-ons. You, know, you can notify the users, it'll take up to a few hours for the notification to get out to them. Because you know, Google's very large, right? I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna take a bit to get things moving or sent out. Right. And then, uh, and then finally, they also explain, you know, by the way, if you wanna tell your users where it's at, these, this is where the add-ons menu is, and you can go find the add-on here. Right, so what is the user experience? So the users, uh, what they will see is when they come into Docs, everybody, when they, the first time they load up a Google Doc after this is installed. Or a sheet or a form. Right? Depending on where the add-on, yeah. So I was just talking about in our, uh, in our case, what we right. just did. We just installed an add-on that's for Docs. Um, you would uh, get a message here if this was the first time that the add-on was um, uh, installed. So there's a pop-up There's mm -hmm. a pop up that shows up and says, hey, your Google domain administrator has installed this add-on mm -hmm. that you can use, and it will instantly show up in that drop-down, right? right? In that add-ons drop-down, and you can uh, and you can launch it right there and then. Right, and then the user from that point on, it's just like the experience as if they installed it. So right. they they will have to go through the same processes where they run it and, and use use the add-on. But it's that is uh, relatively new, right? Right. So I think it's would it be safe to say that. Um, Domain admins probably won't see a ton of these in the marketplace, in the GAM marketplace today. Right, so there, there may be discrepancy between what you see in the GAM marketplace and what you see in the add-ons marketplace because add-ons add developers have to, you know, there is an additional step to make that add-on available in the, to, to the domain for domain-wide install. So, but the, the reaction that I've seen throughout the uh, add-on developer community is, is it's, you know, add-ons want to get, or add-on developers want to get their uh, apps in front of people. And so they, I've seen a lot of developers um, make their add-ons available. They, it's, you see them popping up every day. So I would definitely uh, look for your add-on, you know, add-ons that you like to use, I would definitely look for them in the um, GAM marketplace. And then um, if you don't see it, contact those developers, let them know that you yeah. want their stuff. Uh, reach, reach, reach out to them, mm -hmm. absolutely, and just nudge them a little bit, right? Right. Tell them that's what that's what you want. There's no reason why they would be opposed to it, right? Because it gets deployed to the entire world, right? Okay. So that that's one option, but I think I think there's another option, right? There that's is. also became available relatively recently. Mm -hmm. So Google also made it possible for um, developers if a, if a organization has a GAM app, an existing GAM app, and they want to, they also have an add-on. They can actually bundle the add-on into the GAM app. And so they can keep the you know the, the two code bases separate, but they'll make it one single project. And so that when you install the GAM app, you get also get the add-on uh, with it. And what's cool about that also is they made it so that 
you know, your, your gamut may have been around for a while. You may have been established, lots of organizations have it. We right. have this new add-on that you want to you know, bundle in with it with this new feature. They've actually made it possible that once you bundle with the gamut, the add-on will instantly get installed to the to those people who already have your gamut installed. So retroactively it gets provisioned to everybody who already has Google, the Google Apps app. Right. Right. So that's 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 convenient. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's a good cool feature by Google. Okay, so and that because it's also relatively recent. Mm -hmm. Developers are still sort of ramping up, and probably not all GAM apps have this bundled add-on with it, or more potentially more than one add-on. It's true. Right. It's true, including us, right? We have a, we have an established GAM app, and uh, we have add-ons, and uh, we don't have them bundled quite yet. Well, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. a little bit of work to do. Yeah. Right. So um, this concludes our discussion. Uh, we wanted to share with you our perspective on how to uh, mitigate some of the concerns you may have about Google add-ons, how to do research and um, use some of the commonsensical tools, how to understand the add-on publishing process to remove some of the, some of the magic um, around it, um, and become aware of some of the other options, some of the new options provided by Google recently. Domain-wide um, add-ons, installable add-ons, but also add-ons that are bundled with GAM applications that ultimately give you um, additional control over uh, what gets deployed into your entire domain. So thanks a lot for listening, and um, I hope to see you again.